afternoon. My name is Kawana McGill. I'm a technology specialist with Small Business Systems. Small Business Survival Economic Crisis Systems. Small Business System is a branding, advertising, technology, business development, operation management, and systems development firm. We have the systems that maintain and help your company grow. For the past few months, there has been some economic changes that may have caused businesses to suffer, and many are trying to discover how to stay afloat during these trying times. We can understand the detriment that some may feel, and for others, you may be doing well to do having the right strategies of business concepts in place, though want to continue building to provide resources for the services you provide. However, you may want or need to know the answers to moving forward with a clear understanding of what is next. Where do you go from here? What programs are available for you? How to continue growing and financing your business? I'm pretty sure you have questions in trying to navigate your way through these processes. That is what Small Business Survival Economic Crisis System is here for. Our mission is to help small businesses survive through economic and social crisis. Strengthen your mind, strengthen your body, and strengthen your business. Today, we will discuss the Count on Me North Carolina program by Mr. J. Mattier and financial navigation by Mrs. Venus Allen. Without further ado, let me introduce an awesome, dynamic, great business leader that knows the ins and outs of business with 15 years of experience. He's a business consultant, business financing and financial literacy coach, a senior partner with Small Business Systems LLC. I am honored to know him. He will help you gain insight and steer you in the right direction with your business. Mr. J. Mattier. Thank you, Kawana. Thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, I know that we talked about COVID-19 and the reopening, and there's a lot of confusion out there. But what we want to do is to help you to navigate through the whole COVID-19 reopening process. We know that there's a lot of guidelines. We know that people uh, are opening. We know that there are people that don't know when they're going to open, people that want to open. We've got a series of things going on but what we wanted to do is help you navigate through the process of opening and reopening with regards to uh, COVID-19. Uh, the North Carolina has a new program it's called Count on Me and what it does it kind of outlines best practices that you need in order to open your business. Let's just see. Okay. Hey, okay. yeah, so best practices opening a business. Uh, we know that there's social distancing, we know that there's sanitizing, we know that there's signage, but we don't know exactly, you know, where to get it, what to do with it, uh, how, how much it should be. And so the uh, North Carolina put together the Count on Me program, and we're going to go through that and try to get you some direction on that. Okay. Okay. This training is the North Count on Me training it, program is focused on providing the necessary knowledge and information needed to manage COVID-19 within businesses and provides a consistent approach based on the state and the nation's guidelines. It's a rigorous content that was developed and review process has been followed for all training to ensure consistency with available standards. Material has been created in conjunction with the following Count on Me North Carolina partners, the North Carolina Restaurant and Lodging Association, North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, Foods, Food Protection and facility, fa Facilities Branch. Visit NC and NC State Extension each of these short training sessions are designed to be less than 30 minutes long and are delivered online in an engaging and interactive format. 
Training materials have been created by NC State Extension Safe Plates Program. This program is designed to incorporate the best available science and social and physical distancing, employee health and cleaning, sanitizing and disinfecting, and it presents the consideration of adult education and behavior theories. The training modules at the completion of the training, you receive a printable count on me certificate and be featured on a list of participating businesses. You'll also get access to a Count On Me toolkit that includes social media assets and materials on how to show guests and their staff you've gone above and beyond to protect their well being. The training modules consist of restaurant owner and operator training, front of house staff, restaurant back of house staff, and then all businesses cleaning and disinfecting services for COVID-19 management. This way you'll learn the protocols for cleaning and disinfecting to help keep everyone in the establishment safe. There's also a general best practice training for management. So we have a variety of trainings. A lot of it is geared towards the restaurant industry, which they have uh, food and health. They're required to do certain things anyway, so they're kind of ahead of the game. But then we have trainings for all additional businesses that might need it. Additional resources we have here, the restaurant industry reopening guidelines. There's an enhanced industry-wide hotel cleaning standard for COVID-19. There's industry guidance for promoting health and safety of all travelers. There's also one for vacation rental cleaning guidelines for COVID-19. Non-healthcare employee uh, symptom screening check list. So there's a variety of resources to help you open and reopen your business. There's also a Count On Me NC Restaurant Compliance Checklist, which is very uh, important with regards to restaurants because like I say, they have safe serve and they're required to do certain things by state anyway. They get a score um, each time that an inspector goes out. So this checklist, even if you're not a restaurant, might be good to take a look at just to see what are the appropriate things and what the guidelines are uh, demonstrating. Here's a COVID-19 reopening consideration for global attraction industry. So we have Carowinds, we have uh, a number of water parks and different things. We have the White Water Center. So those particular places are required to follow certain guidelines. COVID-19 reopening considerations for global uh, attraction industries. So we want to make sure that everyone is protected when they go out to those particular establishments. There's also one for spa reopening toolkits. So anyone that's in that uh, spa, massage, uh, beauty care, any industry where there's personal contact, personal relationship, we have to uh, adhere by those particular guidelines and as well as National Park Service public health updates. Frequently asked questions. Who is the training for? There are several training modules available currently for restaurants, owner managers, the front of the house and back of the house. Additional modules for cleaning staff and other businesses will be added soon. Does this satisfy North Carolina's requirements for a certified man food manager? No, this is a voluntary training specific to COVID-19 protocol calls and does not replace other training requirements set by the state of North Carolina. Which training should I take? There are several training modules available. Pick the one that most closely aligns with your job. Currently, restaurant modules are available for owner managers, front of the house, back of the house, additional modules, and for cleaning staff, other businesses will be added. How long does the training take to complete? The training takes approximately 30 minutes all the way through, but you can start and stop at any point. Can I take the training on the phone? 
Yes, the training is available on desktop, tablets, and on most mobile devices. Can I start the training and then come back to it later when I have time? Yes, you can restart the training where you left off. What information do I need to provide to take the training? You provide your name, email address, and company name to access the training. Continuing with frequently asked questions, can I adjust the logo image in color, size, etc.? The marketing toolkit included includes a, a variety of shapes and sizes and colors, so you can choose what works best for you. Brand guidelines are included and give you specific instructions for use. I work at more than one restaurant. Can I make copies of my certificate? Yes, you can download as many copies of your certificate as you would like. Does the certificate expire? or when do I have to take this training again? The certificate does not expire and you do not have to take the training again unless you change jobs, i.e. moving from front to back house or some other environment or some other business. How does a participating business get listed on the Count On Me NC website? You will be listed once you complete the training. It will guide you to a section where you can actually be listed. You add your company name, your website uh, address, and all that information, and you will get automatically added once you complete the training. So what are the things that you can do now? You can help create a, a safer, healthier environment for everyone by following a few guidelines and best practices. Wear a cloth face covering like a mask or a scarf. Wait your turn by maintaining six feet of physical distance from others. Wash your hands often with soap, open water for at least 20 seconds or use hand sanitizer. Use contactless delivery or takeout options if you have been recently exposed to or have symptoms of COVID-19. And you want to be patient and kind to staff and other guests as we all try to adjust to the new norm. This is new for everyone, so we want to just be patient. We want everyone is trying to get used to this, so we want to do that. The things that businesses are doing, they ensure their staff wear clo uh, face cloth coverings. They cannot if they cannot keep six feet apart. In some cases where you have servers that have to come to your table, there's not the distancing that you would need, but as long as they're providing that protection with face coverings or face masks, we, we hope that that will be enough to make you feel safe. You wanna ensure safe sanitized sanitation practices are followed. You wanna administer health checks to all staff prior to shift start. We wanna make sure indoor and outdoor seating meets all physical and distancing guidelines. You can provide hand sanitizer or hand washing stations at the entrance. Clean and sanitize common areas, bathrooms, and high touch surfaces regularly using the CDC recommended guidelines. You want to clean and sanitize all tables and hard surfaces after every use. And you want to clean settings, utensils, menus, and condiments after every use or provide single use options. For further assistance, you can contact Small Business Systems at 704-264-0537 or at our website or at sales at sbsystems.us. We will help walk you through the training and assist in providing you with any materials, signage, PPE, and guidelines. We also wanna be able to, sometimes paperwork and going through processes gets a little confusing and a little frightening to people. So we will actually help you and set up an audit to come in 
go through the audit, do the checklist, and help provide you with the necessary products and equipment that you need. So don't be afraid to reach out to us. We're here to help you navigate through this whole COVID-19 reopening and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mattier. I'm so glad to have you a part of the team. It's awesome. That information on the Count on Me North Carolina program is great information to utilize for your businesses so that you can go farther and beyond understanding what the systems provide. Knowing that, I want you to know you can be, Mr. Mattier can be reached at J. Mattier and Associates at 877 963 four eight six three again that is eight seven seven nine six three four eight six three that's J Mattier and Associates and you can reach him at JMA at consultant.com and J Mattier on LinkedIn and Facebook. If you have any further questions that needs to be answered, that's your information to be reached. Going forward, I would like to introduce you to one of the most prestigious, innovative, and enthusiasts of her kind. She is a leader in her industry of business, a compliance consultant, a clinician, with over 25 years of experience in the behavior health industry. She definitely knows how to take your business to the next level, and I am extremely honored to know her and work with her, Ms. Venus Allen. Thank you, Kiwana, for such a great introduction. Um, I am about to share my computer screen. I do want to say thank you for having me back. Um, the last time I was here with you all, uh, we covered government contracting. Um, so thanks for having me back. I really love what this is all about. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, so I'm here to talk about financial navigation. Uh, this is actually a longer grant um, writing workshop that I developed years ago uh, for free. It was all day, uh, all day training where we actually did practice groups where we broke out into sessions. And so for the asked by Carlos for this purpose, particularly for COVID-19, we're going to go over some beyond the basics of what is needed to write, to write an award winning grant or a request for proposal. The goal today is to increase your knowledge about finding your business beyond the base, about funding your business beyond the basics. Also to increase your understanding about the technical aspects of grant writing and business plans. Finally, we want to improve your skills to become more confident with taking the next step with applying for an RFP or grant opportunity. Some common terms um, that you will learn with learning the business of grant writing or submitting for contracts like we covered in previous, the last time I was here, we covered government contracting and the benefits of being certified as a disadvantaged business entity, a small business through SBA or federally through the Unified Certified Program for being a hub, a historically black owned um, disadvantaged business. But there are some terms that you will come to know as you get experience with writing grants and applying for contracts. So grants, RFP, a business plan, a business proposal, what an award letter is, how to do fact finding, how to apply for a DUNS number or your EIN, your tax ID number. Also, if you're a 501c3, whether you're supposed to apply for what's called a charity licensing number. You can either be exempt um, from having to pay a fee for a charity license um, or dependent on how much donations and sponsorships that you bring in, there's a certain fee scale as to how much you should pay and you want to be in compliance with whether you have an LLC, paying, doing your annual reports and paying the fees to be, a, be in business. You will also learn about grant cycles um, reporting cycles, the difference between a private nonprofit and a private nonprofit. If starting a business, you want to understand the difference between going in as a corporation, whether S Corp or C Corp, and what that means and what's the benefit of it, or whether you should be in a limited liability corporation, which is an LLC. Um, an example would be if you are an LLC 
you will do your taxes and add your business through what's called a Schedule C on your personal taxes where a corporation files taxes on its own. So you wanna really understand the basic structure when you start up or learn a little bit more about your entity and whether you should move from, an, from a sole proprietor up to an LLC and then up to a corporation, knowing when it's time. Strategic planning and how to write a strategic plan, marketing plans, and understanding your target population and what a target population is and who your target audience is. Also another key term is funding source, knowing your funding source. So this slide deck defines the difference between government grants, um, grants from foundations, nonprofits, um, or for rich corporations, or from task force that are set aside to target a particular area. I won't read this slide for you, but I will make this public and free on our cpcoalition.org website for anyone who wants the slide deck and wants to read deeper. Uh, I often get the ask, um, write me a grant. That's a common phrase that I get, write me a grant. Well, one thing I just want to stand out is that a grant is already written. There's already a purpose and so there's a, a RFP, a request for proposals for you to apply, respond to that RFP. So this second slide deck of definitions is about understanding what, a, what solicitations is, what solicitations are, submitting for a bid, and being awarded and also the difference between there might not be a, a a grant already out there so what does that mean that means you need to write a proposal and propose to an entity that hey there's a need for this this is how we see we can meet the need and propose it to someone for them when their committees and their board of directors are meeting they can set aside funds and decide to whether to fund your project or not Specifically for RFPs, you will, once awarded, you will go through what's called the procurement process. And that's on the back end, getting set up for the funder to release the funds. One important thing is for you to understand whether this grant award is a one-time thing or whether this grant is gonna be something that they're gonna um, continue to fund annually. Usually when it's an ongoing grant, you will have to report back some quality assurance and quality improvement and report back some data on whether the intent of what you're offering is what the results um, is. So pay attention to the requirements and any reporting or expectations uh, or, or documentation that's required of you once awarded. So specifically for COVID-19, I want us to, um, know that there are many corporations that are setting aside funds to help um, minority businesses and small businesses. There's government entities who are publicly acknowledging minority dis disparities between small businesses and large corporations and actually setting aside government funding for us during this time because of the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. They're forming task force everywhere on a local level a state level and on federal levels to see where should we disperse funds um i would like to charge you with the task of subscribing to popular organizations and foundations who manage distributing these funds because sometimes it's a short um, application timeline and sometimes they do give you a long um uh, enough time to be able to gather the information, put your budget together. So there's so much funding, but learning how to seek that funding, whether it's free or whether it's a loan, you have to spend daily, sometimes weekly, looking at those major companies and seeing what do they have out or subscribe so when something does publish that it comes to you. So funding sources could be from the government, uh, from other um, nonprofit entities, from for-profit entities, from private businesses like a local electrician uh, company or a local plumbing or HVAC company who just wants to give and is doing very well. Um, and a lot of people give their funding to foundations to manage the application process 
Um, so large nonprofits also give funding, like the United Way Foundations for the Carolina, which I would input their link in the chat box um, for everyone to have. But you want to know who's who. You want to know who's who. Um, one thing you can do is start preparing a template. So you may not have a business right now. Hopefully this, the small business systems sparks interest for you to start putting some of those goals and, um, into action, start jotting down some ideas, get a, 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 do some fact finding to test the culture, to see what's happening, what's going on. For example, right now, social determinants of health is a big thing. So social determinants of health are things besides medical and mental health that affects our, our wellness, things like housing, things like transportation barriers, things like food disparities, and things like interpersonal violence. And so that's what's going on now. Um, identifying that there has been um, a, a injustice between large corporations and benefits that they get, like getting bank loans as opposed to small businesses. So you wanna stay in the know what the current events. So the previous slide was know who's who, but current, this slide here is putting your ideas, testing the waters, seeing what's available, and knowing what's going on currently. So some tips for writing a strong grant application. Keep in mind your audience. So sitting on the panels to approve, I've had the opportunity to sit on many panels to approve applicants. So a lot of this information is from me being a grant writer and being awarded some large and small grants, but also as being on a panel and sitting on a committee reviewing applications. Here are some of some things that typically we do. Uh, another one thing I do want to add is you want to follow the instructions. One way for us to eliminate a lot of applications, so say we get 500 applications. One easy way is just to look at, did they follow the submitting it to us properly? Nine times out of 10, 50% don't. So sometimes they'll say three hard copies of everything. They want you to print out three hard copies and put it in a CD-ROM disk. So what we will do is we'll just weed out all the ones who didn't submit it in the way the format, so then we'll have less applications to look at. So keep your audience in mind, review, and use your information, review your information before setting it in, and don't assume that your reviewers are familiar with your organization and the services you provide. Start preparing the application early. Uh, allow plenty of time to gather required information from various sources and create a pre-scripted template because most RFPs have a, want you to submit a budget, want you to submit um, an executive summary, want you to submit the staffing plans and how will you monitor the quality of, of your program or your business. So have that already written out. If you have that template, you can tweak it depending on who your funding source is. Follow the instructions um, to a T, but make sure you read the eligibility requirements. So some people get overwhelmed when they subscribe to all. Um, if you do subscribe to an entity, just select the areas that your business is in. So then you won't, when you get the email, start to ignore them. But one way to easily weed through whether you should take the time further is just go straight to the eligibility requirements because it would make no sense for you to apply for something that you're not even eligible for. Some requirements are to be a 501c3 and some will allow for any entity, nonprofit or for-profit. Um, one point I do want to go back to is avoid the risk of having the reviewers to hunt through your application for information. Make sure it's in an organized manner. So be brief, be concise, and be clear. Make your points understandable. Provide accurate and honest information. Make sure um, if any required information or data is omitted, explain why you don't have it. Make sure the information provided in each table chart or attachment is consistent with the proposal narrative and the information in other tables. Make sure that your budget reflects back to the proposed activities and all forms should be filled in accurately and completely. Be organized and logical. Make applications 
Um, many applications fail to receive a high score because the reviewers cannot follow the thought process of the applicant or because parts of the application do not fit together. Refrain from submitting extra attachments. This is another tactic we use on the panel to weed out applicants. Um, some people feel the need to provide more information as if that's going to get us to approve you. Um, actually, many grant applications are scored. So we're scoring people using a template. So the extra information can, all, can actually be a negative, providing uh, unnecessary or extra information. Um, so do not give more information than what is requested. Carefully proofread the application. Misspellings and grammatical errors will impede reviewers in understanding the application. Be sure the page limits are followed. This is a big one, that's why it's in red. Uh, limit the use of abbreviations and acronyms and define each one at its first time and then periodically spell out the acronym word again. Make sure you submit your application in final form without markups. Print out and carefully review an electronic application to ensure accuracy and completion. Some grant applications are, are, are requested to be submitted electronically. I would advise you to print it out so you can make sure that you can catch any formatting or page limit requirements, um, even though you're gonna submit it electronically. Check to ensure that all attachments are included before sending an application forward. I just made the mistake three weeks ago, but luckily I have a relationship with the Foundations of Carolinas and they emailed me and said, you forgot to submit this and they allowed me to, but many times um, the entity may not be. So double check all the attachments. Um, of a final tip for were for standing out is to ensure that all the information is submitted at the same time. Um, many of us on panels will not consider additional information or materials submitted after. And one awesome way to look good is submit your grant or RFP a week before the deadline or at least four to five days before the deadline. Um, it does look good and it does kind of have us a little bit biased towards those that turn it in five minutes before the deadline. So it should not be as a panelist, we should not, but naturally, Sometimes that happens. And so how do you stand out uh, with applying for grants during COVID-19? Again, see what's going on, see the charge, see the action that's needed, uh, check, check the news, but also read your government's plans, your governor's plans, what's going on in your region, your county, your city, see what your politicians are doing, sit on some panels, um, watch some committees. You'll start to learn about more funding and what's needed when you start to expose yourself to larger networks. Just like I'm learning so much more from the panelists on this pot, on, on this network because I've opened myself up to this opportunity. I'm gaining so much more information and seeing what other needs are. Um, so with COVID-19 and how to stand out because a lot of people are applying creativity. Do some fact finding, dig up some, some information that you have that can back up the reason why you're, um, you need this assistance or what benefit your business can do even greater to help the community. Um, also top notch graphics and presentations link to companies like small business systems to make sure that your graphic, your graphics and your marketing and that you have security software and following security measures. Um, so then that way you can, boast and brag about yourself in that way visually and also just in your staffing value. Make sure that your marketing material looks like a million bucks even though you don't have a million bucks yet. Innovation. Get letters of support. It is amazing to see if you churches or schools or other businesses support you in what you're doing on their letterhead and, and original signed signatures. Letters of support are often required um, and then also um, references and having them directly on the letterhead of another entity kind of backs you up with the funder you're presenting to. Uh, catering to your audience, the panel and committee. One innovative way is think about whoever you're applying to, 
think who would be on the opposite end to review and decide whether you get this money or not. So, so cater your writing to who you think is on the other side of the approval application. Um, superior packaging. The, um, FedEx, what, did you overnight it and did you, um, or, and did you go to, do you have folders that have your logo on it? Did you um, get it, lamp, um, you can go to Staples and they can kind of bind things together if there's no restrictions against that to make the packaging look good. Uh, current knowledge and current events that are going on that you may can tie to saying, we are doing this, but we're also gonna expand our network by tying to businesses like um, small business systems, um, Kawanda's business and Donna Reed's business and Paranda's business who does credit repair. We can expand and so you can show how you can tie your linkages to the community in your package and use evidence-based practices for innovation. Be dedicated. So stay motivated during this time, although we're all in a pandemic. Look at it, there is a lot of opportunity here. Um, so stay motivated and charge yourself to do a little bit more with research and education and learning the knowledge of the hidden rules of grant writing. So, and then when you're writing, be it, remember to do your template, not to write too much, but don't write too little. So some resources, um, on the last um, video, and I would encourage you all to follow small business systems, their social media pages and the website, um, our last, um, podcast that we did, I covered government contracting and I showed the book, Getting Funded, The Complete Guide to Grant Writing Proposals by Susan Howlett and Renee Burke. And so you can buy the book on amazon.com and here's the link. And then Grant Writing USA. So I attend a lot of other grant writing workshops to compare what am I doing to to others and what can I learn better and more. And I, it was very, it was costly, but when Grant Writing USA came to um, Sumter, South Carolina, I actually invested the money and was happy afterwards that I did. But this is an impressive company and their grant writing classes are amazing. I got so much material. I did post in the chat link, the actual um, PDF and I'll show it to you briefly right after this. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, you can reach me at cpcoalition.org um, or vallen at cpcoalition.org. Michelle Brooks is our president. Um, I want to show you here. This is the um, websites and resources from Jana Rogers, and she was the, the trainer for the Grant USA, but it's three pages, and some of a lot of these were very new to me, and she breaks it down faith based, first responders, healthcare, higher ed, K through 12. She breaks down the industries and, and, and Guide Star. Some people have a hard time navigating through Guide Star. Um, but I will um, get with Jana, ask her if she doesn't mind me to post this publicly on the website. And so, um, in the in the slide deck, I mentioned knowing who manages the money. United Way is almost in every state. Um, this is United Way of Central Carolina's website. And so this would be someone you would subscribe to because when a grant comes out, then they'll email you. A grant that's um, Foundations of the Carolinas um, has a page. They are a very wealthy foundation um, and they have tons of grants. They've given me a personal grant. Um, um, for school as being a m minority uh, and have given my son a grant for a scholarship um, for being a minority. And so I love them. They are a really great. They have a grant out now. COVID-19 Response Fund, where United Way is, you see how both logos are here? They're charging foundations of the Carolinas to take the applications and score. So um, and then, but the funds is going to come from probably both of them because they both have money. So this grant is out now. And then Carla shared with us, this grant is coming soon and it's for small business recovery program. And so remember the tip, go straight to the eligibility. Um, eligible businesses must be headquartered within the limits of Charlotte, North Carolina and employ 25 employees or fewer. 
or fewer. So it can be a business of one to five. So businesses with five or fewer are eligible for grants up to $10,000 and employers with six to 25 eligible for grant awards up to 25,000. Um, uh, SCORE Charlotte and SCORES in multiple cities, that's another entity that helps with writing business plans and budgets. But if you have any questions, you can contact me on cpcoalition.org and I hope I you found this information helpful. Thank you. Wow, wow, amazing, great information, Mrs. Allen. We really appreciate you giving us some insight on how to steer our business in the right direction with financial concepts and navigating our way during these economic times. Um, she can be reached, again, with by her company at the CP Coalition LLC on Psychology Today or via her website, nonprofitcoalition.org. Thank you for joining us today. Again, we're with Small Business Systems. We believe in providing you a service that you can trust and afford that will maintain and help your big company grow. We offer a variety of services that will help you build a strong, successful small business system. Here you can follow us on next Saturday on June 13th at 2 o'clock p.m. to learn more about the small business economic crisis systems. Here you will learn by Mr. J. Mattier, Small Business Systems and the Business Model Canvas, and the Integrated Payment Solutions by Mrs. Lakeisha Fowler. You can reach us at our Small Business Systems website at smallbusinesssystems.us. You can reach us at 704-264-0537. Please follow us on our Facebook with Small Business Systems, our Instagram with Small Business Systems, our LinkedIn, with Small Business Systems and our YouTube channel where you can learn more information and visit us there. Thank you for joining us today and we look forward to working with you and helping your business grow.